What up, y'all? So in this podcast, I want to talk about influence, impact, you know, and I really believe a lot of it depends on how people perceive you. You know what I mean? How much they like you. Um, All of us have a set of people that, you know, there's a set of people in your life that when the phone rings, it doesn't even ring twice before you answer. You know what I mean? Maybe you esteem them in a high level. You honor them. You love them. You know what I'm saying? And then there'll, there'll be people that the phone rings six times and you know what I mean? It goes to voicemail or it does that repeatedly. You know what I mean? And it's been a while. Um, so yeah, man, like it, it'll depend. It all depends on, you know, what, like the connection you have to somebody, you know, it speaks volume. You know, I see a lot of people try to pour knowledge and wisdom into people that hate, hate their guts. You know what I mean? And, a, and the person is pouring out the knowledge and wisdom. They don't even realize how they're perceived by the people that don't like them. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people giving their unwanted opinion. There's a lot of people that, and they don't even, but they don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people just don't have the self-awareness to understand that their opinion is not wanted. You know what I mean? Cause people don't always say how they feel, right? Like you could say something that rubs somebody the wrong way. And you might not know until seven years later when they bring it up, like, yo, remember seven years ago when you said this and in your mind, you're thinking, damn, like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You still thinking about that, you know? So yeah, man. Um, I remember I had this one friend, right? I remember I asked him for his opinion. He told me to go ask somebody else. He was like, yo, go ask this dude. You know, you seem to really care about his opinion. Like, you know, he seemed hurt that I honor somebody's like opinion more than his, but there, there's something to, yo, a person who, who desperately wants to pour into your life and they're constantly trying to give you wisdom. I'd stay clear of that. You know what I'm saying? Because there's something about insecure people that the, the, the sense of honor that they feel is when you follow their advice, when you listen to, you know what I'm saying? And maybe they're giving good advice, but it's like they get a high off of you listening to them. You know what I mean? And then sometimes I question that people's motives, like, are you giving me advice because it's good for me? Or you just want to get a high off of feeling like your life has value because you got a set of people that fucking listen to you. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, man, I don't know for me, like, you know, any, my motive is always going to be like love. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not so I can feel good. It's not so that, you know what I'm saying? Like if I say something to a person, it has to be because I, I know the impact of, of if they follow it, that they'll be okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get high off my own supply, but insecurity drives a lot of advice. You know what I'm saying? And insecure, sometimes insecure people and people that don't have their own life developed, they like to tell people the most, yo, here's what you do to sort your life out it's like bro you barely you don't got your life sorted you're trying to tell me how to sort minds you know what i'm saying so i don't know man i, I know how to like I know, I know how to pick up i know how to pick up on signs i know how to understand what what's not being said because like people don't always say how they feel and i know how some people feel about that they're like yo we some grown adults like why do i have to pick up on signs or how come people can't be open or how come i'll tell you why people hold back information from you right or like how come people will have a problem with you for so long and say nothing because having the actual conversation about what you're doing that might be annoying them it's difficult one thing i know about human beings in general we stray away from anything that's fucking difficult if it's difficult we don't even want to get them why do you think no one wants to you know what i'm saying like i don't think people don't want to be entrepreneurs because they don't believe it's possible per se i think people are just you know they're weary about how difficult it's going to be, you know, how much change they're going to, people are used to routine. They pick a routine and they stay within it. You know what I'm saying? We get fixed into schedules. We get fixed into mindsets. We get fixed into uh, routines and whatever it is that we do. And then we just don't know anything else besides that one way. You know what I mean? Um, which could be a good thing and a bad thing, you know? Like it's a, it's a, it's a bad thing if you develop a bad habit and that becomes your routine, you know what I'm saying? And then that, whatever your routine is or your hobbies, it takes away from, things that you could have been doing that would better help you is or would be a better use of your time. Right. But it could be a powerful thing. If you find out the good, like the right strategies, the right routines to get into, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm sure working out 30 minutes per day is an amazing routine. I'm sure smoking cigarettes 30 minutes per day is not, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, you, you, when you, when you're talking to people and you're wondering, yo, this motherfucker, like no one's listening to me. Right. If you wonder why you have to quest, you have to ask yourself, you know, or for, just ask people, you know, be like, yo, how much do you, do you respect my opinion? And don't get mad at people, yo, don't get mad when they say, I care nothing about your opinion, right? Let's say that they say that to you, the, you know, like the way to position yourself to not be mad by th words is to believe people have the right to say words. Cause every time somebody's ever said something to you that you took offense to is because you're sitting there 
obsessing over how they shouldn't have said it or they don't have permission to say it or they don't have the right to say it like you know what i'm saying like i always talk about that you know that person that deleted me uh on facebook which i don't care like it's, it's no big deal but i was talking about the medical field and how i don't believe that any medication is for your mind i don't believe any of that shit works you know what i'm saying i think pharmaceutical companies are scams you know what i'm saying and she took offense to that because pharmaceutical companies seem to be like her lord and savior so it's like i was disrespecting her god so she, she wasn't having that she got rid of me you know what i'm saying the only reason she had a problem with my podcast here's some of the thoughts that possibly could have been going through her head like yo who the hell are you you're not a doctor you're not qualified to say this or do this or say that and it's like bro this is facebook like you know you don't have to be qualified to have an opinion like we all have fucking opinions it doesn't make us right you know but in her mind she was like you know because she she also she also might have had thoughts like you know you don't know what it's like to have this type of disease or you don't know what it's like to have this type of mental disorder you don't know how that medicine is actually helping people and my perspective was like look i don't believe none of that shit works right and she just she, she's on the other side of the fence you know what i mean so no matter what your message is no matter what your belief system is there's always going to be somebody on the opposite side of the fence that just goes against whatever you're for you know what i'm saying like you know some people are pro-life, some people are pro-abortion, you know, some people, they're like, yo, it's the woman's choice. And then some, some people, some people will make the argument that, you know, um, life doesn't begin until there's a heartbeat or until there's brain activity, you know, but, you know, and then some people are like, yo, a fetus is a fetus, you know, from the moment of inception, it's life and you're taking away a human life. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, when it comes to arguments, cause I be saying when it comes to like, all right, so let's talk about abortion for a second, right? it's a strong topic that like, you know, you're either on one side of the fence or the other. But when I see two people on, on the opposite side of the fence come together for a conversation, they're not able to have impact on each other. Nothing besides negative impact. Why? Because they spend all their time insulting each other. Yo, you're stupid for having that opinion. Like, why, why do you think it's okay to kill a baby? Or why do you think instead of trying to be understanding and say, you know, like, here's my opinion, but I'm super interested as to why you think it's okay to have abortions or why you think it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to understand your viewpoint. Um, People are not, you know what I'm saying? We're quick to speak. We're not, you know, instead of being uh quick, quick to listen, slow to speak, you know? So when you're quick to speak, like, you just won't understand people you're talking to because all you're doing is imposing your current belief system and questioning them as to why they just don't already believe what you do. And then, oh, how could you believe this? And why are you on that side of the fence? And why, you know what I'm saying? All the time, like criticizing instead of trying to understand, you know what I'm saying? And it would be so much more healthy conversations if you actually tried to understand the person you're talking to. But you're too, you, if you're too busy judging their point of view, right? How can you ever have any conversation without it being emotional this is why people can't they say you're not supposed to talk about politics and religion those are sensitive topics i don't believe any topic is fucking sensitive people are sensitive thus they make fucking topics sensitive to talk about it's not because the topic itself is sensitive it's because people can't control their emotions when people say things that you think they shouldn't have said and then you get quote unquote triggered because you have a list of criteria that they're violating when they speak they shouldn't say that they shouldn't dress like this they shouldn't speak like that you know what i'm saying like like, you know, what I'm saying? why do you think curse words offend certain people? Because every time they hear a curse word, they start obsessing over how it should have never been spoken in the first time. Or your mom should have raised you better. Or you should have, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just understanding like, yo, people curse, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what do you think? God loves that person any less because they do that? Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure God's not excited that people talk a certain way. But I saw a video on, on this similar topic, actually. It was funny. It made me laugh. Um... This guy, right, he he prayed, he prayed for sick people, right? And uh, they healed, you know, they recovered. And uh, I don't know if they were blind or they were crippled, but whatever their condition was. And, you know, he prayed for, he laid hands on them, he prayed, they recovered. Their expression was, what the, f just happened, you know what I mean? Like, yo, these people don't know God, man. Like, can you imagine if you're blind, someone puts hands on you, t two minutes later, you're not blind anymore? Like, what would your expression be? And if you don't know the Lord, you're probably going to have a lot of unsanctified language. Like what, you know, but you know what I like about God and what actually this is what he pointed out in the video. He was like, you know, what's cool about God. He was like, when they, when they cursed, he didn't hit the reverse button on the blessing. He didn't say, oh, you cursed. So, you know, like, you know, like your vision was taken away, but you know, I don't like how you cursed. So I'm going to make you blind again. Like, yo, like God's not religious people are religious about god and people are religious about imposing their moral standard upon other people that's another thing bro you want to get people to listen to you respect their point of view right you know what i'm saying like there's nothing wrong with you talking about your difference of opinions 
But sometimes all we do is impose, impose, impose what we think and what we, we're trying to mold people to our image instead of understanding that they don't have to be like us. No one, people don't have to think like you, you know, like the reason things don't bother me the way they would bother other people is because when people don't return my text messages, I believe you have the right to ignore me. Yo, I, you don't, you never have to get back to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not alive for you to get back to me, you know? So you're never going to bother me with how long it's been since you last hasn't, haven't returned my phone call. I'm not going to count how many days it's been since I last talked to you. And then the first time I talked to you, make it such a big issue that you need to make more time for me. First of all, there's so much on my schedule and there's so many things that I need to accomplish in this world before I leave. And the time that I spend criticizing you for how long you take to answer my text message is taken away from my timeline yo like i have no idea how long i'm going to be on this earth and i refuse to spend any of it being bitter about what you choose to do with your time because i feel like you are under no obligation to return my text messages or phone calls you know what i mean so that's why i'll never have an issue with people but so many of us feel like people need to be considerate towards us they need to fucking be this or that like just you know like you know like all the miserable people in the world they share one thing in common they're obsessed with what they believe should have happened or what shouldn't be happening and they stay there somebody cut you off in traffic while you were driving you're going to spend the next two weeks obsessing how that one person like you know nearly caused the accident and it's like yo they shouldn't have cut in front of me they shouldn't have did this the person shouldn't have said that to me they shouldn't have my life shouldn't be this way you know what i'm saying and the more time you spend that spend doing that it's like yo you could be developing a strategy to get out of your situation but complaining fucking prevents you from doing that you know what i'm saying because complain like you know what i'm saying like circumstance it might not life is not going to mold to you you have to be adaptable you know what i'm saying so anyways I'm, I'm veering off topic a little bit but let me see how much time i got a second all right when my phone get to five percent i'm out so i don't, I don't got my time i'm at 15 percent now yo when people like you they listen. Trust me, bro. They they will listen to you like none other, you know. And to me personally, because I ha I feel a great sense of responsibility with with my words, with what I say, you know. When I know that people admire me, when they honor me, when they esteem me highly, that's when I really gotta make sure that, you know, that I'm only saying the words that I believe God wants me to say to people. Because if it's up to me, I'll say all the wrong things. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to live my life to where everything that comes out of my mouth. It's only the things that Jesus would say if he was in person, because in that place, that's the only place that I know that I could be edifying, encouraging and always saying the right words or words of advice, because in this world, there's times to be silent and, it, you know, there's times to say something. There's times to be silent. We often confuse the two. You know, we speak when we should have been silent. We're silent when we should have spoken. And I'll give you examples of both. You know what I'm saying? Like when your heroin addict friend overdoses and dies, there's times when you were silent that you should have spoke to him directly about his addiction or she've told him like yo bro like you know there was words that you wanted to say but you thought it would be too strong you thought it would be you know what i'm saying like you thought it would be imposing or whatever whatever you thought it would be you thought it would be uncomfortable and like i said about one thing i know about human beings we like comfort so anything that's uncomfortable we avoid that's why we have our heroin addict friends that overdose and die and we never had the conversation with them why because we imagine the conversations in our mind going south so many times that we believed that's how it was going to go. It was going to be a bad conversation and just never had it. And then your friend overdoses and dies. And it's like, fuck, I should have spoke, should have said something. So those are the times that we stay silent when we should have spoke. And then the times that we speak when we should have stayed silent, it's like, you know, you don't have to tell everybody exactly how you feel all the time. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes an impulse arises, an emotion, and you just speak on it like, yo, I'm not one of those people that holds it in i'm gonna confront you like yo here's how i feel you know and then you give them a piece of your mind and then you don't feel any better about yourself after doing it you know all you're doing is just upholding them to a standard that if they don't follow you're gonna be upset again the next day anyways you know what i mean so they're completely in control of your emotions your emotional state depends on them jumping through hoops for you to be good you know what i mean so yeah man um there's there's power in being a likable person. You know what I'm saying? There's power in being esteemed highly. There's power in people admiring you, you know? But once you get all that admiration, once you once people think you're cool, once you know what I'm saying? It's even more powerful when you actually have a message, when you actually have something to say, something is worth their time listening to that if they listen, their life will change drastically because of what you're saying, you know what I'm saying? Like I have no idea when I do these podcasts what type of impact I'm having on people. You know, I, I know quite a few people that they really admire me as a person and you know, it's humbling and all that, but it's like, bro, like, you know, follow Jesus, man, like cuz there's no greater example than that, like his character, you know, the way he perceives life, the way he handles things, you know? And um 
there was a lot of people in my life personally that tried to pour knowledge into me, but I didn't fucking respect their opinion. Hold on, give me a second. I didn't respect their opinion, you know? So what they had to say to me meant nothing because of who it was coming from. You know what I mean? Sometimes, what up, Jacob? What's up, Dion? What's up, Taisha? Sometimes somebody could be giving you the best advice in the world, but there's a good chance if you don't like the person, it depends on how much wisdom you have. Because if you have a lot of wisdom, you could take the best advice in the world from the person least qualified to give it and still learn a life lesson from someone that you don't even really respect like that. But yet their words change your life. You know what I'm saying? Even though you, you perceive them as a fool, even though you perceive them as someone that, you know, shouldn't even try to give advice. But you're, you're able to pick out the golden nuggets from what's being said and apply that to your life and grow stronger. That's what wisdom is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not just knowledge. It's how you apply the knowledge. I think some, you, I, I believe somebody's wise if they're like 20 years old. You know how 20 year olds have the wisdom of 60 year olds? Cause that's possible. You know what it is? Be, well, maybe they listen to 60 year olds talk a lot. But besides that, you know what wise people do? We, we observe foolish people and we learn what not to do in life through them so that we don't have to make their mistakes. You know what I'm saying? And it save, it might save you years of time, years of torment, years of, you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a verse in the Bible that says, my people perish for a lack of understanding and all you're, and all you're getting get more understanding, bro. People are struggling financially because they don't understand finances. People are struggling, struggling in their marriages because they don't understand marriage. You know what I'm saying? They get married for, for themselves it's not even for their partner you know what i'm saying like if you woke up in the morning and you need your wife to put you know three cups uh what you call it three spoons of sugar in your coffee you know what i'm saying and if you're gonna spaz because like you're like you you take a sip and it's like yo this damn coffee tastes like it was one one spoon you know what i'm saying i asked for three specifically like you know if that becomes an issue it's like yo you're in your marriage for the wrong reasons man you're in your marriage for your wife to do everything you want her to do and you're gonna throw a fit if she's not where you need her to be which means you're always gonna have arguments you know what i'm saying so anyways um i don't know where i'm going with all this but yeah man um yeah, there's been a lot of people in my life that they just try to pour into me and pour in. insecure people. There's a lot of insecure mentors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not so desperate to want to pour into anybody's life because I'm not always sure that the words that I'm saying are anointed or or or, or things that God would himself would have said if he was in the flesh. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm not because I don't know everything, bro. So like, you know, and I, I make sure if I ever do give advice, I'd be like, yo, bro, like, here's how I feel. Right. But follow your intuition. You know what I'm saying? If you feel differently, live life according to your terms. But here's what I really feel like I should say to you. And then just go, let it go from there. You know, when you put so much of a pressure on a person to live to your standard, you know, first of all, they're not going to want to be around you. And then when things happen in their life, you're going to wonder why you're the last person to know. And it's because you make yourself out to be a person and nobody could tell shit to because of your reaction. And now when they're talking to you, maybe they want to tell you stuff, but they fear your reaction and their fear of your reaction keeps their mouth zipped. And then you you think there's a problem with them that they have a problem opening up. And it's like, nah, but in their mind, they think you, if only you were more cool, if only you were more lenient, if only you were more understanding, if only there's so many people in this world, bro, that when you start speaking, you have 15 seconds to orchestrate your thoughts completely. And if you don't get your thoughts out and a proper, like, you know, all of it, they're going to, that rebuttal is coming. That interruption is coming. You know how much pressure that puts on conversation? And if you don't naturally talk fast, like, like me or like someone else, like Ben Shapiro, that motherfucker, he, yo, he talks fast as shit. But if you don't, if you're not naturally a fast talker, it makes you not even want to talk to a person because you feel like you got to hurry up and get your point across before they come with a rebuttal saying, yeah, but what about this? And what about that? And what, you know, and some people are just not going to understand you. Give me a second. Some people are just not going to understand you, you know? I was in a cab that I was, I was, I was driving somebody in Lyft the other day and uh, she was telling me to be realistic, you know, or to be something like that. She doesn't know realistic is my least favorite word. And I hate that word. You know, you, you know, what's the quickest way to be a basic ass person. Use the word realistic in a, in a sentence daily, you know, because you'll, you'll start falling into whatever you consider normal and then you'll f put yourself in a box, you know? Like, yo, bro, if you believe in the Bible, you got to understand, like, right now, all right, so what I'm about to say next, this is specifically for people that believe in the Bible. 
You're like, yo, bro, you believe in Noah's Ark. You know how crazy that shit is to non-believers? Noah's Ark, or what about the story of Moses? He, like, you know, him tapping a staff on a sand and a fucking ocean splitting in half and people walking through it. And then, you know, the ocean collapsing on their enemies behind them. You know, how, you know how much faith it takes to believe that shit, you know? There's nothing practical about that. There's nothing realistic about that. You know what I'm saying? So this whole realism, it kills those type of, I, yo, like there's, there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says these signs will follow those that believe. And it talks about laying hands on sick people and they will recover. Like, you know, blind people being able to see again, deaf people being able to hear again, wheelchair bound people being able to walk again, raising people from the dead. Yo, if, you know, if there was a dead man on the street and if I laid hands on him, prayed for him and he fucking came back to life, you know, like, let's say that really happened. Tell me one thing that's realistic about that. Tell me one thing that's practical about that. Tell me one thing that's logical about that. You know what I'm saying? So my thought process is in a different realm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm definitely not above people. You know, I'm just above mediocre thought thought process, like thinking patterns. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in thinking in, in, in terms of what's possible. You know what I'm saying? I already know anything is possible, you know? Like, cause, cause yo, raising dead, like praying for a dead man and he, him walking, like, I believe that's possible, bro. There's nothing practical about that. You know, she was telling me the, the importance of having a plan B, you know, I believe you're going to be a failure then, you know, like Michael Jordan, all he had was basketball. Derek Jeter, all they had was baseball. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, Dwayne, the rock Johnson, all he had was wrestling. You know what I mean? Like plan B in my opinion. And you guys could think what you want is for losers. Yo, like the, the moment you created plan B, you started doubting plan A. You needed a safety net. Cause it's like, what if I don't make it? Why are you thinking about what if I don't make it? You know what I'm saying? Well, definitely you got to have self-awareness because there's people that want to be a quarterback in a football team. They can't throw a fucking football. Like at least know what you're talented at. You know what I'm saying? But damn, I don't got, I don't got time to actually give me a second. I could plug my phone in, but I, I'm going to wrap this up pretty much soon. Give me a second. Uh, I probably got a couple minutes. I'm, I'm charging my phone. Man, it's hot. I got a shower. I'm like in my car. Windows down. I should at least put, put the windows down. Give me a second. Yo, it is hot outside. What's up, Tony? What's going on, bro? I always lean on my faith. I hear you, bro. There's so many things in this world that are not it's not based on practicality, you know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with like, you know, if you're if you're a planner, you know, if you like writing stuff out, if you like, you know, but I don't know, bro, I'm just different. Like a lot of times when I travel to cities, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Recently, my car like got shot at, you know, and I just took I was, you know, I was in Brooklyn and I left, I, you know, took a three, three and a half hour drive. You know, I, I knew where I was going, but I didn't know what the hell I was going to do when I got there. But I believe in God. I believe he opens up doors, bro. When I got out here, Lyft accepted me. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing Lyft. Right now, my account is, is, is shut down. But yo, you know what I'm saying? And things just started opening up. And I started having... Uh, I started... <laughs> what's you up, bro? Me, bro? Yeah, I know. Because I had the windows down. And then I just... <laughs> nah, it's all good. I'm just doing a podcast and stuff. And uh, you want to join? I don't know if you want to sit in here with me. But yeah, this is my friend that I always talk about um, how his mom was being mean to him and he changed her with kindness. I tell your story all the time on here. So he's next to me now. Um, but yeah, like, yo, when I came, when, when my car got shot at, I didn't know what jobs I was going to have, but God just opened up a door. I started doing lift. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. Um, so yeah, to that lady that was in my, in my car, she was trying to tell me, be practical, be, be this, be that. And it's like, yo, there's so many things that are not practical man like you know what i mean like a lot of things in, it's not practical to think that moses could part a, a ocean in half there's nothing realistic about that you know what i'm saying so yeah anyways um so yo like when people what's up i got you bro oh yo can i go with you all right um so i'm about to i'm about to wrap this up but uh oh uh, no nah, um can, can you give me like two minutes and i'll be in there yeah right, i got you bro uh, yeah. So yeah, man, I just want to tell you, man, you know, um, I, like I'm sure there's a strategy to getting people to like you, but I know that once your personality, like once your personality becomes what you, once you become the person you were created to be, you know what I'm saying? Cause there's so many people that have personalities that they're not supposed to have me when I was going through six years of depression, 
I had a personality that should have got tossed out the fucking window because it wasn't people's fault that I was depressed. It was my own perception of life, my personality, like me thinking that I need women to tell me they love me so I could feel like a lovable person. That insecurity shit, I was not created to be insecure. I was not created to have an identity crisis and need you to love me for me to feel okay. You know what I'm saying? I was not created to like to need you to be to need anything from you in terms of your compassion, your kind. Like it's awesome when you're kind. I think it's awesome when people are kind, when they're compassion, when they're considerate. But the thing is, we fall apart when people are not doing the things we need them to do, and then they're the reasons why we can't be okay. And I think that's the world's biggest deception is that right there. And that's where all emotional heartaches come from. I can honestly say, from now on, when I meet women, I don't have to necessarily guard my heart from them because I have a perspective that guards me from getting hurt. Because you know, even if I meet a woman and I fall in love, it's healthy now. And I'm not loving you because of how you stimulate me and, and how you meet my expectations and the way you speak. You know what I'm saying? Because all you got to do is not stimulate me that way. And then now I'm in quandary and I'm questioning whether or not I love you, which means I never loved you. I only loved the stimulation that you gave me, which means I never loved you at all. It was selfish. It was a selfish pursuit. You know what I mean? So just little things like that. It's like, yo, I'm never going to get worry about getting heartbroken again. You know what I'm saying? And I can say that with confidence because I know what broke my heart. It wasn't people. It was a terrible perspective that I held on to. And it was it was mediocrity. It wasn't even me. But I identified with it so much. It became me, even though I wasn't created to be a mess. You know what I'm saying? When people don't act a certain way, like that's weak. You know what I mean? And I just I, I wish I knew that 10 years sooner, 15 years sooner. I would have had so much impact on people. Um, when people like you, bro, they listen. When people honor you, they listen, you know? So if people are not listening to you, there's a good chance they don't respect your opinion for whatever reason. And if all you know how to do is impose your point of view and tell people that it needs to be your way, bro, people are never going to be listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're vegan, stop thinking that people have to be vegan. If you're Christian, stop thinking that people have to be Christian. If you're Muslim, stop thinking that, you know what I'm saying? Because if you think like that, you're going to have a problem with anybody that doesn't convert to what you want them to be, whether you're an Why do you think... You know, so many entrepreneurs, they get left on red because when you message people, it's not for the interest of the person. It's because you have a company, a network marketing opportunity, and you want them to join because you get compensated if they join. You don't even.